Hello, friends, and welcome back to 20 Questions With. For those of you who are new here, this is my fun way of introducing you to other costumers and costumers by asking them 20 silly questions. Today, we're talking to Amber of Lady of the Wilderness. Welcome to my channel, Amber. Thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, Amber has actually been on my channel before, although I wouldn't blame you if you had missed it because <laughs> we met in an elevator when I was vlogging at Costume College. And Boy, howdy, was that an awkward moment for me. I was like, hi, I like you. You're cool. Can I film you? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, you hit it pretty well because I was actually kind of like, uh, 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 I, oh, <laughs> because, I mean, you had a camera and I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going on at all. <laughs> yeah, I freaked a lot of people out without camera, I think. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's totally okay. I was just like, oh no, I'm going to ruin her shot. <laughs> no, not at all. So. When I met Kate, she was like, hi, I really love you and your work and your vlogs and blah, blah, blah. And I just like pushed a camera into her face. I'm like, hi, this is Kate. And she was like, uh, Kate is not, a, uh, she needs a warning before you're going to shove a camera in her face. <laughs> <laughs> lessons learned at Costume College 2019. <laughs> yeah, some lessons are a little bit harder to learn than others. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to tell everyone a little about about yourself and your channel and your shop and all that stuff? I, I can attempt to. Um, yeah, so my name is Amber, and um, you can find me as the Lady of the Wilderness on all sorts of different platforms. Um, and what I do is like more historically accurate costuming for the 18th and early 19th centuries. I have branched out into other eras. Right now, I'm kind of working on Edwardian. That's like the end thing to do right now. But um, <laughs> but I'm branching out into that. Uh, but it's kind of a slow roll with everything else that's going on. But um, I do have a shop as well, and I just launched the website for, which is like, uh, it's been a long time coming. It's been a whole year of me thinking and plotting and trying to figure out what I want to do. So that's uh, virgilsfinegoods.com. It's named after my doggie. And um, is your dog Virgil? My dog's name is Virgil. Oh, that's cute. I didn't yeah. know that. I've, I've locked him out of the room, so you won't see him. <laughs> his, he's a little miniature schnauzer, and um, his little uh, collar just, like, clinks around when he goes everywhere. So I was oh, like, uh -huh. ah, let's yeah. go mess up the audio. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. But... No worries. I'm messing up our video right now. I, I got new glasses today. I got progressives. I'm officially Ooh. an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I didn't realize they were going to reflect that blue. I'm like, okay, huh. cool. Yeah. Are they the the like non-reflective kind? Or... Yeah, it's non-reflective for me, but apparently not for everyone else. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's okay. I have 400 pairs of glasses, so I'll just remember that for next time. I, I am envious of your glasses collection. Thanks. So I am supposed to wear glasses, mm -hmm. but I have not. Um, oh. I have an astigmatism and I'm supposed to wear bifocals. And it's not that my my vision is horrible. It's just that my eyes strain so bad. Um, and now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, Ugh, I need to get these. But you have a pair of purple ones that I'm like ah, super envious of. <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, so I have an astigmatism also. Okay. Um, and I wear contacts a lot of the time. But lately, as you get older, it like is harder to wear contacts. So I've been wearing my glasses more and more. Mm. And um, I decided to try progressives because they say like the earlier you can try them, the gentler the progression is and therefore the faster you can get used to it because you have to train your brain how oh. to get used to them. And oh, if you gosh. can do it early, then your brain like always remembers how to do it. And as your prescription changes and gets like, it gets more different from top to bottom, mm -hmm. then you like can have an easier time with it. So that's why oh. I did it now, but yeah. That's probably why they've been telling me to wear glasses for the last 15 years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I highly recommend it because it makes me be able to, you know, see and stuff. So that's yeah, <laughs> well, I've so your your sight is supposed to change after you've had, you know, a pregnancy. And so I've now had two where it month 10 past the last one. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to I'm going to finally go to the eye doctor. I'm going to be an adult. And now I'm afraid because like, I cannot see the same things that I used to be able to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, oh no, this is going to be, be a fine. bad time. It's probably not as bad as you think. Like mine, my prescription isn't even that strong, but I still can't see very far. Okay. Like, I have friends who are significantly worse than I am. And they're like, oh, your prescription is nothing. And I'm like, really? Because okay. when I take off my glasses, I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're used to that, you know, 
Yeah. And then when you take it away, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how it used to be for me. I had, I wore them a lot in college Mm -hmm. because it was a lot of note taking and looking up and down. And Mm -hmm. that's when I would get migraines. So I I got this piece of advice when I was young, which was every year that you have insurance and you can get them to help pay for your glasses, you should get glasses while you're young, even if you don't need new ones. Because when you get old and you're on Medicare and you can't afford to buy the frames all the time, you will have this massive collection of frames Mm. and then you can just change out the lenses, which is significantly cheaper. Well, I did keep all of my glasses. So I've always been like, I get them every year, no matter what. And sometimes I get like, I have another pair of these exact same glasses that I just got and I got them in sunglasses format. Nice. Yeah. So, you know. You fancy. I am fancy. (laughs) Are you ready to play 20 questions? I, I don't know if I'm ready, but I can try. <laughs> <laughs> I love everyone's like, uh, maybe. <laughs> well, I, like, there is like this slight apprehension of like, oh no, what if I can't answer the question? <laughs> I think that would be fine. If you can, I'll bail you out. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> if you were a candy bar, what candy bar would you be and why? The why part is what stumps me because I have a lot of candy bars that I like. But if one represented you as a person, are you creamy? Are you nutty? Are you <laughs> caramelly? Are you chocolatey? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm all of them mixed together. Um, okay. Most of the time. So, it's, so you're a Snickers bar. I mean, I like Snickers. <laughs> Snickers are good. They are um, very satisfying. <laughs> Indeed, they are. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> what it says on the package. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, my favorite, if I had to choose like a candy bar, candy bar is uh, Mr. Good Bar, which is like super boring because it's just peanuts and chocolate. But I wouldn't say that that describes me. So I suppose, yeah, Snickers would probably be it because I I am a softy, hence the caramel. Um, and I and can nougat. be sweet. <laughs> yes. Oh, nougat. <laughs> um, we've been watching the Bake Off lately. And so hearing oh, uh-huh. like nougatine and stuff, I'm like, is this a different time? Oh, nougat? Nougat? No. Like, what is this? <laughs> no, it's just British. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, British for nougat. Um, it's a much better way of saying it. But yeah, I'm definitely nutty. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I am also like, I feel like I'm eccentric and crazy about half of the time. So having nuts in there is kind of important yeah but and we can say chocolate because of my hair but I, I mean everybody know. likes chocolate that's true it's true yeah. I don't know if everyone likes me but we I mean who cares I feel like most people like you that's good <laughs> whatever happens happens <laughs> what is something that we would not expect about you probably that I don't say most of what I'm thinking Hmm. So as a talkative person that I am, there's a lot happening like back there that doesn't come out. And that kind of filtering has, it's been a long time to work on that. I have had lots of conversations that replay in my head and I'm just like, (laughs) (laughs) but why did I say that? Like, what? (laughs) It doesn't make any sense. (laughs) I don't say most of what I'm thinking either but that's good for everyone else. <laughs> right. That's, that's kind of how I feel. Um, yeah. And I mean, there's, there's a part of me that because I'm so scatterbrained, it's really easy for me to get off on tangents. And if you talk to Kate, you will know. <laughs> and if you ask her about like our conversations, they end up going every which way we always come back to whatever we're talking about, but it's like, Whoa! Um, and I really feel like if I were to just blurt all that out, it would be, it would be a bad deal. No one would be able to follow what's going on. Yeah. Well, at least you're good at filtering now. I'm better. Better. Yeah. Better. There's still work to be done. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes. (laughs) I know that it's very controversial, but, um, I actually like it without ham. I like it with just bacon. I like it with pepperoni too. I like pepperoni pineapple. See, pepperoni is a little too spicy for me. Mm. I'm, I'm a lame-o. So um, yeah, we usually get pineapple bacon pizza with extra, extra bacon. That sounds amazing. And I'm going to have to try that. (laughs) 
if you could learn any one skill in the world without trying, like matrix style, what would you pick? Well, so part of skill, like knowing to do skills is for me, the like joy of it is learning it. Mm -hmm. So that kind of takes the fun out of it for me. Fair. But I guess playing the harp. Yeah. Cause like sometimes learning the skill sucks because you have yeah. to like, you, you're like, mm, why aren't there montages right now? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, this, this isn't awesome and it could be better. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, like playing the harp, I guess the harp or the accordion, either one of those, I would love to just like whip it out and be like, all right, here we go. Um, Cause I love both of those instruments and I have taken a few, I take a summer of lessons for harp. Um, and it's really fun, but as a pianist, you know, I took years of piano, so I'm used to a pushing mechanism, mm -hmm. like to make things happen. And with a harp, it's actually pulling and plucking. Yeah. And when you see people playing it in movies, it's like this. That's not, it's like this. It's not as pretty, yeah. but, um, but yeah, I would like to be able to whip either one of those out. So I guess I'll choose those. All right. Yeah. Either one would be fine with me. That, that's a great skill to learn. <laughs> it's pretty. It is pretty. <laughs> I like listening to it. And you'd be like super fun at parties. <laughs> if I could wheel around my harp, yeah. Yeah, or an accordion, you could like whip out a sea shanty and all good oh, to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, those are the best <laughs> songs. <laughs> what fictional character do you identify most with and why? Well, now we got to like filter through like movies and stuff. Because those yep. are fiction too. <laughs> This is a big question, right? I think the the problem with me is that I never feel like I am a leading character. Mm. And so Even I identify, yeah, um, like I, I kind of feel like whenever I watch a movie, I rarely identify like all the way with, with the mm. leading character. And I know that that's how most people kind of identify, but um. So when, when you look up fictional characters, it's all. Well, you <laughs> could look up funny. like supporting casts. Yeah. Are you Willow to Buffy? Like. <laughs> I've actually never seen that. Oh, yeah. I'm way older than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just haven't watched much like TV. And I've, I've learned that in being married to my husband. Like he mm. watches so much film. And so he'll be like, have you seen this movie? I'm like, No. We, I mean, we just watched Die. I watched Die Hard for the first time this uh, holiday season. Do you think it's a Christmas movie? Ish. I mean, I can see why people would want to argue that it is, but it, it, it to me, it's just an action movie that happens at Christmas time. So. I am with you. I, I am hardcore. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did give my husband a. Um, what is that place? Naka, Naka Tommy Plaza t-shirt. Like it's the okay. that happens in. I yeah. I mean a long time, but yeah, I gave him a, 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 a Naka Tommy Plaza Christmas party t-shirt for Christmas <laughs> <laughs> because he That's is awesome. a, a diehard is a Christmas movie person. Okay. Yeah. Does he make you watch it? He doesn't, he doesn't make me watch anything, he, but he, he has it okay. on and he invites me to, and I'm like, I'll watch it not at Christmas because it's not a Christmas movie. <laughs> what a stance. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the first one that comes to mind is, so when I was younger, I would say that I strongly identified with Meg from Little Women. Mine is um, from Little Women too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, totally Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can see parts of of Joe in me, um, especially when I'm talking to my mom, because my mom is a lot more of a meek character, or like that's just to her. She's her a Beth. <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> um, well, actually, I think mom is Amy. My oh. mom's name is Amy, and my mom is Amy. But in in the like the sweet um meek side of her like as meek as she could possibly not be. the spoiled brat bully part of amy right okay. um but uh but yeah i i felt like i really identified with meg growing up because i i had a clear idea of what i wanted um and uh even if that changed like even if what i wanted changed i still never really strayed from the path of what i wanted 
Um, yeah. from the beginning and I'm sure there's other movies that like now I kind of identify with as a whole but I would say that my inner character is part of is mostly like the sentimental caring you know I really like to have things set out for me like mm-hmm. roles and whatnot and so that's I think that's probably the the most core in there okay that's fair This is a question you may have just already answered. What incredibly common thing have you never done? There are so many things. It's like finding one that's fun and not just like, (laughs) oh, um, (laughs) like you're that weird. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I, is this like, I've never and have no desire to? No, it's just like what, like you could literally be I haven't watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer or whatever you know like whatever it is oh I never went through sexual well eh, I guess that's not that's not that uncommon there's lots of people that don't go through it I didn't go through um sex ed class oh uh uh-huh I had it like seven times like they told it to us all the time like starting in like a California thing (laughs) maybe in the 80s like I started in like third grade and going through like high school I had sex ed like all the time there and it was like you got moved into huh. separate gyms and they showed you a different video and like these are boy parts and it was like an anatomical oh. thing and these are girl parts and like here's what sex is and here's okay. how babies for you know yeah hmm. and then when you got older they started teaching you about like condoms and birth control and stuff gotcha now so we had um so I was homeschooled from fourth grade to um eighth grade uh-huh. And so those are the years when you get like the actual sex ed classes and yeah. I literally never got those. So there were lots of things that I learned on the fly that, <laughs> that I really wish that I would have, have known. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, and I know a t-shirt that says that <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot of things on the fly that I wish I would have known. <laughs> Um, everybody wonder what that means (laughs) yeah um and I I guess you know depending on what what your parents decided you were because I guess in Ohio you can opt out like your you can opt your kids out of those things so maybe that's not so common but um I think that's been the most jarring one to like my being is that like there were lots of there were lots of things that happened with me that I was like (laughs) Um, and there are lots of things that I learned about other people, um, that was just like, this bodies do that. Have you razzed your parents about this topic? Um, my mom and I are pretty open about it. And, um, see, she had me when she was really young. And so I think that part of it was that she was in a different stage of life than most people are when it comes to like you know, educating your kids. So, Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was just different. Like I knew very bare bones things. And now we talk really openly about almost everything more so than a lot of moms and daughters do. But yeah, it it wasn't that way until I think I got married. Wow. Okay. I I got married at 22. So the first time I feel like I would have been screaming at my mother. I would have been like, why did you let me go into this situation and not know that that was going to go down? Like, I did not know that that's what that looked like. I didn't. Well, that's, so I just finished Bridgerton and I know Uh there's a lot of talk about Bridgerton right now. And, um, but anyway, when the girl with the funny haircut comes through and she's like, what, how are babies made? I I had, I like laughed so hard because I felt that. Uh (laughs) like wait wait a minute Um, this stork thing is not accurate (laughs) well yeah and the fact that like she's an older actress playing such a younger Uh, character that I I totally felt that because like I was way older than I should have been when I learned all of those things so it was it was just funny (laughs) so you thought this answer was gonna be boring and it was not (laughs) I I guess it's not but if people don't want us to talk about sex ed then they might want to edit out that that question no, people can deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> when someone finds out what you do, what question do they always ask you? Oh gosh. You can actually make money with that? Yeah. That's that's what I get. Um 
Uh, one time when I was actually applying for internships, this had been 10 years ago. I just realized that my internship at Colonial Williamsburg is 10 years ago now. Oh, mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, I had posted on a um, forum because um, this was before we had like, you know, Facebook was the hub of everything. And I had posted on a forum like, hey, does anybody have any um, costuming internships available, you know, I'm looking for something. And I'd explained in the forum what my degree was. And there were at least three, there's so many responses, but there were at least three of them that were like, oh, well, you could also take basket weaving. And just like totally degrading the fact that I was like, take, I was, it's a legit degree. It's a what specialized is a degree. degree. Um, so it's, a specialized studies degree. So I did compile my curriculum. Some people call that cheating, but um, I'm only three classes away from an actual history degree. And the title of mine is historic costume construction and American history. So I studied primarily trans transatlantic history. So mostly colonies and stuff. And then um, I did a lot of museum work and working with different museums to reproduce certain like things. I have a couple of projects that I'm still working on from that time because life happens. Um, But yeah, that's what that's what my degree is in. That's cool. Yeah, I have a degree in politics and I work as a web producer and everybody's like, is that useful in any way? And I'm like, you would be shocked. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) It, It I I know how to open some doors if I need to. Right. I mean, politics is like everyone's like, eh, why do we got to talk about politics? I'm like, politics is everything you do. That's the thing. There's politics in your house. Yeah. Like between people. There's politics between my cats. Like <laughs> politics is everywhere. And it's, it, if you understand it, like, and you can see the like t- tropes happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also have a minor in philosophy, which is again, okay. a completely basket weaving kind of degree and is so <laughs> useful. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because like yeah. anytime anybody wants to talk to you about something, you can be like, oh, well, Emmanuel Kant said blah, blah, blah. And then they're <laughs> like, oh, you're smart. And I'm like, no, I can just remember stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember things, but I can't, I can't like get them out of my mouth easily. So, mm. <laughs> so that's why part of me is like, mm, just. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you're super quiet, I'm going to be like, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? <laughs> and then <laughs> I'll go like this. I used to do that to a friend of mine and he would go if I wanted you to know what I was thinking I'd be talking exactly yep yep and my husband is a lot of times just like he he hears the brunt of it because especially right now we're not seeing anyone and Uh I'm only really calling my mom or talking to Kate you know through texting and so (laughs) he gets a lot of it and he's like this all goes on in your head yeah my husband's like that too I'm like I have like six burners going at once back here like I'm listening to music I'm thinking about costuming I'm also thinking about what's going on in the capital right now like and he's yeah. just like oh I can't right now <laughs> can we like shut some of those gates <laughs> yeah <laughs> I get it I get it man what is one thing still on your bucket list the one that's kind of the highest priority I guess is to go to Europe I have only been to New Zealand and um, Canada. Well, you got like the farthest and the closest out of the (laughs) Well, so New Zealand was like top on the bucket list. And um, when I got married to my now husband, he had been saving up anyway for a long time to go to New Zealand and it just worked out really well. So we did our honeymoon there and we were there for three and a half weeks. And it was, it was so much fun. Um, I would love to go back again, of course, to see Lay Momi because I work with her now. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it's a cool world and we can do it through the internet. But yep. um, uh, yeah. So when I was homeschooled, we did a lot of like self guided learning. And um, I had a really brief stint where I was really into art history. So um I would love to go and see all of those super old places. Cause we don't have those you know, the oldest place around here is 1811. Yeah. Um, and it just, it's mind boggling that you can go somewhere and see a building that people are currently living in that is 500 or more years old. Twice as old as your country. Right. It's just, it's amazing. Um, and it's also tragic. Like it's really like 
when you think about the political and everything that has happened historically here, the things that would have been here had, you know, the um, native population not been wiped out, you know, yeah. that's, that's what's sad. So yeah, there is like older stuff close to my house, actually, like not even like that close, but pretty close. But uh, it, it and people discount it a lot of times. And I'm like, no, that doesn't make it like not important. They're just all Native American sites. Right. And like you can go see uh, the caves with the handprints in them. And, you know, yeah. like, there's all kinds of stuff in like the south southwest area. Mm -hmm. So we go look at that stuff a lot. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. This is like 500 years old. And I'm like, wow. Right. Yeah, it's so cool. We have the um, the mounds. There's a lot of mounds in Ohio. There's actually some that are really close to me, and I still haven't been. Every time that I've had the opportunity to go, like a, a free day, it's been raining. Oh, and, yeah. you know, one thing I really don't want to do is go to a sacred site while it's raining and walk around yeah. You know, while it's muddy. Yeah. That just, it seems, it seems really disrespectful. Yeah. So, so yeah, I've just not been, but but yeah, but there's also the the not Adina Mansion. Um, it's in is it in Indiana? There's like this really really big pyramid type oh. of earthwork mm -hmm. that's somewhat close, and that I guess that's on my bucket list too. Much easier to accomplish than going to Europe right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but much more legal also. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> What's something a lot of people are missing out on because they don't know about it? We just talked about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, taking a bath. Yeah. There's something really awesome about just being able to literally sit in your own filth and like, <laughs> and just be. No LT. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It it's, that's the perfect description. Yeah. Someone was like, it's, if you look around and there's carrots and onions and stuff, then it's soup. And if not, it's tea. <laughs> now I'm like, I could throw a carrot in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my um, mom have a bathtub and boy, howdy, does that make me sad? We do oh, have a wow. hot tub, but it is outside. And okay. it's shocking how, even when you have your own hot tub, how little you go in it because um, it's outside and you got to like, yeah. And there's like, yeah tops to take off and you know like a uh, like top now, of do you thing. do you have lots of bugs where you're at no I'm in California we don't have bugs okay <laughs> I'm not kidding we do have spiders but that's it they're not gonna go in the hot tub I'm so jealous <laughs> California is pretty awesome yeah I've been a couple of times but like here whenever like people do outdoor things you have to have like citronella candles and all these things around because if there are lights there are bugs and yeah. um, so like when I think of getting in the hot tub, it, it would be at night or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. My parents have one and they said they really like to do it in the winter, but they don't use it at all any other time. Yeah, kind of same. But yeah, the idea of just like sitting and being, um, I don't like doing it at the beach. Like a lot of people like to take a beach vacation, but I've been trying to take more time out for myself and just being able to literally sit and yeah. and it's never truly quiet in my house, but to have a quiet room mm -hmm. and just be like, I'm leaving for an hour. Mm -hmm. Nobody bother me. Mm -hmm. um, but Epsom salts also help because I've started running again. So it, they're getting, baths are getting a little bit more um, necessary. Yeah. God, I I'm getting I older. I feel these joints. <laughs> yeah. It gets worse. It just keeps getting worse. That's fun. Joy. <laughs> If you could choose any two famous people to have dinner with, who would they be? I wouldn't want to have dinner with any of my celebrity crushes. So that, that could get awkward. That narrows things down because you can't see, but like when I get, when I get flustered or I start like laughing a lot, I get really blushy and I'm smiling anyway. So people take that the wrong way uh -huh. sometimes. And then I get hit on because they think that I'm coming onto them and it's like, a... so if it was somebody that I actually like was somewhat attracted to, it would be a bad deal. So that narrows it down a little bit. And this is just famous people. It's not necessarily celebrity. Yeah, anyone who's famous. Okay. I also think famous is super rel relative. Sort yeah. Of. Because you could be like internet famous in your niche without like actually being famous. You know, 
like Bernadette is internet famous in our niche, but like you talk to anybody who doesn't do costuming and they're like, who the heck is that? So, right. like, you know, it, you're, yeah. it could be any level of fame. Okay. I'm going to go with Andre Ryu. Okay. Um, if anyone doesn't know who he is, he's a very fun um, conductor mm-hmm. and he has a traveling orchestra. Very boisterous, very fun. And he seems like a very exciting person to be around. And the other one would be Rhett McLaughlin. Who's that? From Rhett and Link. He's a YouTuber. Oh, okay. I don't watch okay. that YouTube, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I guess both both Rhett and Link, I, I would I would um, definitely hang out with both of them. But I identify a lot with the things that I listen to Ear Biscuits. And so a lot, that's our podcast. A lot of the things that he talks about, like going all into whatever hobby he's into. And right now for him, it's cooking. And I'm like, all here for it so I I would just want to like sit down and talk to him about what thing you making this week Rhett yeah yeah. (laughs) so that sounds yeah yeah and uh I think what with Andre Ryu it would just be fun to reconnect because I am a musician I started out you know everything as a musician in college and so there's a lot of me that yearns for that kind of time and that kind of talent again Mm -hmm. or skill I guess it's more of skill but so I would love to just like talk to somebody who's all in it and who is super passionate about it because yeah. I could talk to anybody for hours if they're passionate about what they're talking about. If you could have a personal assistant, what would you have them do? Oh, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. <laughs> Actually, I just I just planned out the next uh, four months for my business. So it's today has been a very heavy like what all can other people do for me? Um, And the answer is not much because we can't really see them. I would probably have a personal assistant clean up as I go. And I I know that's not really what a personal assistant is supposed to do. They can. But I know, well, definitely they could. (laughs) It's your personal assistant. Um, But I would feel bad making them do cleaning work because I hate cleaning work but that's not oh but I'm like doing. there are people like me who like cleaning work like if I was going to be a personal assistant I would volunteer to be yours because I very much enjoy cleaning and organizing okay it, it makes me super happy okay I love organizing don't really like cleaning mm, I like so. I'm the person who's like got a toothbrush out and like my husband's like what are you doing and I'm like I'm cleaning the baseboards <laughs> <laughs> and he's like is that necessary? And I'm like, well, look at those baseboards. Now look at those baseboards. Which one do you like better? And he's like, well, it does look a lot better over there. I'm like, right. So, <laughs> so here I am. So here I am. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, it takes all kinds. Um, and I would definitely accept you as a personal assistant. Um, but if I were to move you from this tiny little thing, because I'm in my studio right now, there's a lot of crap happening. <laughs> yes, yeah, same. This is a very oh. specific shot. <laughs> <laughs> this is my happy space. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like when I talk to um, other people on Zoom because I get to see other happy spaces. It's uh-huh. kind of like walking through Ikea. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Then. Oh. In, in my case, it's literally walking through Ikea. Like, this is all Ikea furniture. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it even better. <laughs> yeah. This is one idea for your space. <laughs> <sighs> What is your favorite section of the grocery store and why? Mm, I love the grocery store. I hate it. What? I hate it. I hate it. Oh, man. I hate yep. going in there. You spend like two hours. You're dicking around the whole time. You forgot something on the other side, like seven miles away all the time. And then you get there and you realize you something. You forgot something else on the way other side. And like, why is the cheese so far from the bread? And like, <laughs> Also, then you try to leave and it's like $300 and you're like, I got cat food and that's it. What happened? Yeah. I've been feeling that a lot lately. Baby formula is very similar. Um, Before you know it, you're like, I was not prepared. So when you go, so off topic, but when you go to the grocery store, how do you set up your list? Well, we have this like list of stuff that we generally like to have in the house and we check box and uncheck box those items so if if we if we need them they get unchecked and then as he gets them chris is the guy that goes to the grocery store right now because i hate going to the grocery store so he he checks them and then they drop to the bottom of the list 
So we do that. And then if we have any like special things, like we're going to try something new, then we make that. But I, I don't know what his plan is for me. I'm a full tour kind of girl. So I will go down every okay. aisle because I'm like, if I don't go down every aisle, I will invariably miss something. Right. And, that you've been rattling around in your head for a while or something. Yeah. And also like, I kind of like to see what the new options are, you know, even we though you don't like going, <laughs> we do this when we go. Well, if I have to go, I want to make it a shopping experience. Okay. When we go to Costco. We do the same thing. Like we're like, are we targeted here or are we full tour? Mm. And you know, it's Costco full tour, right? Like, yeah, you never know. I can get find. 74 toothbrushes for seven 99. Heck yeah. <laughs> <sighs> that's interesting so I love going to the grocery store I look forward to it every week mostly because I really like to cook and we try a new recipe probably every other week or so so there's there's a lot of like discovery and exciting things about it when I set up my list I literally set it up by my route oh okay yeah so I make sure that as I'm going, if I don't have everything that's in that section, basically like produce or the, is the first bit. And then I, I put a line. So I know that that's the end of, of that. Then I don't miss anything. That's smarter than we are currently. <laughs> mm -hmm, I agree. Well, I, I got really frustrated after a while of doing what you were talking about, where I'll get clear to the end of the store and be like, I forgot cilantro. And it's and always on the other all side. The way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's very frustrating. So that kind of system has worked better for me, but it does mean that whatever the ongoing list, I basically have to look at it and transcribe it into yeah. the root. Well, but, we could um, make the ongoing list have sections, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That would also help you like hit the organizing like yeah. button for you maybe. It, it would. I still don't want to go. I'm still going to send my husband. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So his root is. <laughs> all right so back to back to the question which was my favorite section yeah right now it is the cheese section hands down the so, cheese section is the best I have not been a snacker for most of my life but all of a sudden I have really taken a liking to cheese mm -hmm. and we have at Kroger they have like this thing oh, called the yeah, Kroger they have the Murray Cheese that. Shop and mm -hmm. well, the Murray Cheese Shop, which is just a, a fancy cheese counter. Mm -hmm. And because we're in such a small place, it's really too fancy for where we're at. We're super mm -hmm. rural. I don't think that anybody cares about this cheese except me. Like when that, I'm there. That thing is only in rural areas for some reason. And they have that only in like I have this friend who lives in Maryland and it's they have one of those and they have the best cheese in that thing. And I'm yeah. like, I need this. And we have. I live in California in like the bougiest part of California. I live in Silicon Valley. It's garbage. Uh -huh. Garbage. Oh, that's so sad. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. man. I, I delight. I delight in going to the cheese section and it's, it's early on in, in the route. So first you hit the produce and then there's the cheese bar and then, and then you can go and get anything that you want that goes with the cheese. Mm-hmm because you've been there first. And so I recently discovered triple cream brie. <gasps> That's my favorite. So I have always liked brie whenever people have brought it out, but I, I, I like make my own jams and things through the summer. And so it's been really fun to take cheeses and figure out what things I can personally pair with from my garden. So this thing is called Saint, Saint Angel triple cream brie. Mm -hmm. That's a good one is hands down the best brie I have ever had. It is like butter. Mm -hmm. And it feels one. almost sinful to put it in my mouth, Mr. Saint Angel. I have one I'll send. <laughs> I'll send you my cheese log so you yeah. can see my top racks. But cheese I have log. a triple cream br breeze you need to, yeah. <laughs> I also like a good cheese log, by the way. Um, <laughs> Same. <laughs> but I literally called it cheese log and then I was like, star date, blah, blah, blah. And I put it. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing I used to do that with beer um when I lived in a, a beer town I need to do that again because I, I do enjoy it but so what's what's your favorite cheese then I've got to ask honestly it's probably either a triple cream brie or maybe a good camembert that has been heated and okay. served with the right sides okay. but I have this friend who lives in Maryland like in the willy wax of Maryland and we went to Kroger and got this stuff and they have this crazy 
um, triple cream brie that I'm, I'm gonna send you but then they also had this like I like blue cheese but not a ton of blue cheese but they okay. had this blue cheese that was the triple cream brie of blue cheese oh and it was not overly like I mowed through the I ate nothing but cheese for five days my friend oh my just gosh. putting a, he put a cheese board out every morning we'd roll in and we would literally just, he would just keep refreshing it. And then at one point I'm like, we're out of the triple cream brie. We got to go back to Kroger. And he's like, that's 45 minutes away. And I'm like, I don't care. We're going 45 minutes just to get to the Kroger. Don't care. Going to Kroger. So, I mean, he has closer grocery stores, but that's, right, but that's the only one. Yeah. So I'm like, we're go- like, what are we doing here? We're just sitting in your living room for six days. Like we can go to Kroger. So, so we went to Kroger and got more cheese. And I only had 24 hours left in Maryland. I was like, I'm going to mow through all of this. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, it, you should send that to me because my husband really loves, loves blue cheese. And I'm, it's, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I would like to try a good one. Um, I wasn't a huge, I mean, I was an okay fan. Like I like a blue cheese dressing, but I like okay. it kind of toned down. This stuff right. was so mellow. And then he had like a honey that was delicious on it, like a, a mm. macadamia nut honey. Okay. Um, and then uh, maybe some fig jam or something with that or apples. Probably be good with almonds too. Yeah, for sure. So like, I don't know what it was about that. It was like something magical about that particular blue cheese that I was just like, okay. this is the one. So yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. My, my favorite cheese is the espresso v- or yeah. Espresso Bella Vitano. Mm, okay. Oh my goodness. That. Okay. So it's one of these like People are going to get really bored of us talking about cheese. But anyway, it's um, kind of a hardish cheese that's got um, uh, the crystals inside it. I love those. And, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's so much fun for your mouth. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it's got espresso on, like encrusted on the outside. And they have Ooh. all different kinds. So there's like, there's Merlot, there's Chardonnay. Mm-hmm. They have a bourbon one. Um, and then they had another one that's not, it's like a, another food. It's not. Um, alcohol it's got like the slightest hint of sweetness and with that espresso on there you can honestly eat it because espresso is a palate cleanser Mm -hmm. so you can basically eat it with anything Mm -hmm. it is my favorite I'm gonna try um it's it's so good they make it it's from Wisconsin I think okay but yeah it's called Bella Vitano Bella Vitano okay and I've not had I've not had a flavor of it that I haven't liked. All right. No, so. no. I went to Whole Foods once about five years ago, 10, 10 years ago, some, some longer time ago. And I was kind of late at night. No one was in the store. And I walked up to the cheesemonger in Whole Foods and I was like, I'm looking for something new. And he's okay. like, do you have time? And I'm like, oh yeah, my husband's like shopping. He's like, you have like 20 minutes, half an hour. And I was like, sure. So... <laughs> He begins by asking me like 50 questions that are super mm-hmm. random. Like, do you like things that taste like dirt? And I'm like, you know, I would have said no, but actually I had something yesterday that I was like, mm, this kind of tastes like dirt. And I, I weirdly like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or mm-hmm. how do you feel about the smell of caves? Do you like crystals in your cheese? And I'm like, I don't know. And he gives me a sample of cheese and I ate it. And I was like, oh, I'm a texture eater. So I was like, okay. Yeah. Yes, I love this. So, <laughs> so he he starts like this whole questionnaire happens because he has a degree. Like some of the people who work in Whole Foods oh. have a degree in cheese mongering. So he so he's he's like the sommelier of cheese. Yes. So he then <laughs> presents amazing. me with ten pieces of cheese and is like, "I think you will like these." So I try every one of them. There was one that I was like, "That's okay," and the rest of them like blew my brain. So I bought mm-hmm. chunks of all of them. So that's when the cheese log started because I was like, oh, clearly I'm into this and clearly I need to write them all down. Right. Because like, at, at least with wine. So my mom is a, a wine person. Mm-hmm. Or, it's her job. She's not a sommelier. But um, anyway, I have tried so many kinds of wines and it's frustrating when I go and like on the very, very rare occasion that I'm deciding like, which one am I going to get? I can't remember what I had. Yeah. So like, it's definitely the same thing with cheese. I've been buying the same ones lately because I know that I like them, but I would, I would love to see your list. Yeah. Like I really like a Mount Tam. That's my go-to. Have you had Cowgirl Creamery Mount Tam? I've not had that. You should try that sometime. It's a real good one. Um, It's a 
it's a brie like substance it's delicious i really okay. like they have it at whole foods it's one of those but mm-hmm. cowgirl creamery is also close to here so i don't know how far they ship it out like that's the other thing is like i think some cheeses are like only available to like a local area right yeah yeah i'm sure that they are what i've noticed at least about our particular kroger because it is so small is that there's cheeses that i see in and they're gone in the blink of an eye mm-hmm. like i won't i won't see them ever again and um, I think it's because, at least for us, there's t- always, like, the, wo- so they have, like, the woohoo stickers, <laughs> mm-hmm. which Bob and I always think is funny because of the Sims. But, um, but yeah, so, like, people aren't buying it. Oh, uh-huh. So, it, like, all the time I'm seeing these things just, like, roll through. So it's possible that it came, but if it doesn't sell, then, of course, they won't ship it out. Yeah. And sometimes people won't buy stuff that they don't know. Right. Right. Unless they're given a sample or whatever. Yeah. And I I usually go at a time like at lunchtime when the the cheese people aren't there. Yeah. Like they're on their lunch break. Who would have thought we would be having a 20 minute discussion about cheese? (laughs) (laughs) Not me, but now I want some. (laughs) Now I want some too. I usually have a, a bunch of like cheese and charcuterie downstairs. I found out that like the veg delivery service that we use also delivers cheese and charcuterie and you can order that as an add-on and I'm like, yes, please. So I'm trying all these different like uh, m- meat sausage dried things. Like, oh my goodness. You know, like 1 million different kinds of those and then all the different kinds of cheeses that they have. I'm like, let's give, the- I mean, it's going to arrive at my house. Why would I not try that? Right. No, that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Now you you started talking about charcuterie and I got stars in my eyes. Mm-hmm. So we have we have a refrigerator down here that we don't have anything in, and I really want to convert it to being a meat locker. Oh yeah. So I can make my own prosciutto. Oh yeah. And recently somebody actually just listed on Facebook that they have like a meat slicer, and I'm really tempted to just buy it and just then start. It start making my own charcuterie because I go I like mow it down mm-hmm. like, I, I need another I- another hobby like a hole in my head but <laughs> yeah I remember when I went to get my um sewing machine for my grandma and I was like do you want to have lunch grandma on me you know you're giving me a sewing machine she's like no I've already had lunch I'm like oh what did you have she's like cheese and crackers and I was like that is not enough grandma and now I'm like oh my god that sounds amazing <laughs> oh yeah I I have definitely resorted to that as of late oh yeah it's a completely legitimate meal. It's awesome. All right. <laughs> Have you ever had a supernatural event, seen a ghost, or anything like that? Sorry, I got a zest in my mouth. A zest. <laughs> I put some uh, some orange zest in You're my drink. You're legitimately saying zest, not just some metaphor. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, literally zest. And um, I was dumb and didn't use like the the nice peeler. I used the grater. <laughs> So I've got like tiny little pieces floating around and I just had to chew one up. Um, Okay. So supernatural event. Um, None that have happened recently, but when I was little, I had a lot and a lot of vivid dreams. And I remember telling my mom about a dream and I just remember telling her like the dream itself and her being like, um, kind of like flabbergasted by it. And then later, like, so I would have been four when that happened. And I don't remember this dream. So I just remember telling my mom about the dream. She later told me when I was older, obviously, I think I was maybe 12, that because we were watching some documentary about like Native Americans in Ohio. So I was like, huh, this all seems like real, and I was like really feeling it deep down. And I, I feel that way about like things about Ireland and West Virginia and stuff like that. Like there's something deep within me that really, it like strikes a chord. And so I'm watching this documentary about Native Americans in Ohio and mom was like seeing how I was reacting. And I could tell that it was also affecting her by my reaction. So I asked her like, what, you know, what, what are you thinking about mom? And she goes, when you were four, you told me about this dream about a woman who you described in a way that made it seem like she was Native American. And you described all of these different things in extreme detail. And um, mom said that 
after I had told her, you know, a few different things, um, it wasn't prophetic or anything, but I was just in such detail. And it's not like I was watching documentaries when I was four about Native right. Americans or anything. And she looked it up at the library and what I was telling her was about the Adena Indians in the area. Wow. So wow. I, maybe you had a past life experience. I, I maybe, I don't know. It's just, it was, it was one of those things that my mom told me about it. And I was like, Hmm. Huh. Because I, I do re really, truly, when I watch, when I watch and hear about, you know, the Native American experience, I weep inside. Like it, it, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it is so in me. Um, and I can hear about other things and not feel the same way. Yeah. So maybe I did. I don't know. Oh. But she, she was like that. That was a really weird and s nearly supernatural thing. Yeah. And um, we are very conservative Christian, you know, growing up. So <laughs> it was kind of like, yeah, not the usual. <laughs> but. Oh. I had a prophecy dream once. Ooh. I when I was five or six. So I had two teddy bears that I got given when I was born. Big T and okay. little T. I still okay. have Big T. I've, I've actually shown Big T on my channel, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's my, my cuddle bear. And then I have little T, which was like my favorite like I have pictures of me at Disneyland with little t and like little t went everywhere with me and he was awesome so I had this dream for every night for an entire week and my mom can verify this because I woke up every day and told her this when I was super little I was like five maybe six okay and I kept saying that I dreamed that I was a witch and that I accidentally turned little t into a hostess cupcake with the three rings on top which at that point in my life I had never seen but probably saw on television Okay. Like I never seen or eaten a real one because I still haven't seen or eaten a real one. Anyway, okay. in my dream, I I accidentally turned Little T into a cupcake, and then I ate him before I realized that I had done that, and I was heartbroken. Like I woke up crying every day because I was so upset that I had yeah. like transformed my teddy bear into this hostess cupcake and then eaten it and I couldn't get him back at that point like if 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 I hadn't eaten him I could have transformed him back but no okay day seven little t gets lost forever in real life oh no did you accidentally eat him though no <laughs> <laughs> um we think he got left at target in the grocery cart in the, the shopping cart yeah um, because target was like a new thing to us Okay. San Diego and my mom, we didn't really have the money to shop at Target. We were like Walmart okay. and this thing called Fedco that used to exist. Oh. We shopped there a lot, but we went to Bougie Place for the first time. And then I came home and Little T wasn't there anymore. And my mom went back to Target and like tried to get the teddy bear back. And there, it was gone. Aww. So, so anyway, that, so to this day, I have never eaten a chocolate hostess cupcake with the three rings on top because okay. I'm like, are those trauma? Are those ho hos? Uh, I don't know. Those are Swiss, Swiss cakes. Maybe. No, Swiss cakes are rolls, I thought. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's just like a chocolate cupcake. They, I, they have some name. Anyway, I've never eaten one because I'm like, nah, -uh. even now, if right. I see one, I'm like, mm, mm, mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aww. So that's my prophecy dream. Oh, that's so that sad. Is, yeah, it was really sad. <laughs> All right. The next question is super complicated for everyone to understand. So I will give you clarifying language. Okay. The zombie apocalypse is coming. What three items do you grab? Your children, your husband, your pets, anyone you know is not an item. Okay, so they're, they come with me anyway? Yeah, they all those people come with you anyway. And your pets and whatever. These items have to exist in reality and it would be better if they actually existed in your house now. Okay, I've actually thought about this scenario in case like war broke out. Yeah, okay. So I'm an over analytic person. So like, part of the reason that like things are running through my head all the time is I'm like preparedness. I'm with you. Um, I, I actually have a zombie box in my garage. That's for the <laughs> zombie apocalypse. So yeah. That's I amazing. Mm -hmm. My, my diva cup or my flex cup. <laughs> okay. That's a solid one. Like, yeah. <laughs> because one of the things that I've thought about in case of like being upended from my house is like, what the heck would I do if I, I have a really heavy flow um, oversharing guys, sorry. But anyway, um, what would I do? Yeah. If that happened, because mm -hmm. I, I would be chafed so bad if I had to just deal with that between my legs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
I'd probably get that. Phones would be irrelevant, so there would be no point in having a phone. We've had the answer of my cell phone, and I'm like, okay, but why? <laughs> my seed, my seed collection. It's all, it's all in like a little box. Um, I would probably grab that yep. um, because I would be the person that, you know, back at the homestead, wherever we would shack up, um, kind of doing that stuff. And a canning book. <laughs> And a canning book? And a canning book. Okay. So your expectation is that you will definitely survive this apocalypse and then you will be there ready to start anew. Yeah. I would be looking more toward the future and hoping that whoever I was with would kill said zombies. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Um, I think those are solid items. Yeah. Because I think, I think that my husband would probably choose the gun that we have in the safe and some some other things but like anything else that i could think of for preparedness i can't carry with me like i can't carry frozen foods with me right um so so yeah i i would go with that because safe canning practices are very important and i really don't want to accidentally kill everybody that's around us because i gave them botulism also you just survived the zombie apocalypse and you have to die of botulism that sucks yeah that would be really (laughs) terrible it's like um, the people who they think like got lost in is it is it Jonestown in America that they they think that actually they went to live with the Native Americans now? Um, it's uh, I yeah I can't think of it because I've been drinking. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's in it's in Virginia. Yeah, that that town. Like, imagine crossing the ocean on that boat, getting there, and then like dying of botulism or something. You're just like really. I survived that and this is what's right. gonna kill me. Like really just I, re- it. I, I can't actually think about that particular situation without feeling terrible dread for those people. Yeah. Although they they think that they have sign signals now, like they've found evidence that they actually just went and lived with the Native Americans. Okay. That makes yeah. me feel a little bit better. I haven't looked yeah. into it for a long time, but I uh, just like I just saw a thing on my news feed like a month ago that was talking about that. Oh, I'll have to look it up. That'll set my mind at ease. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because everyone's always been like, oh, they got killed by the Native Americans. And it, actually, there's like signals that like somebody wrote something on a tree that's like, we're with them. <laughs> oh, OK. Like for whoever was coming to to yeah. save them or whatever. Yeah. And everybody read it as these are the people that killed us instead of mm. we're actually just over the hill at this town. That's like a, a half an hour away. OK. I'm like, uh, OK. Right. <laughs> what is the worst thing you've ever eaten? <laughs> Oh my. Okay. So like when we a were lot of really bad things, <laughs> I have, I've had a lot of not great things. Um, several things that I've made myself that did not turn out very well because I, I like to look at a recipe. If it's not canning, I like to look at a recipe and be like, how else can I make this? Not what the recipe said. And I'm really bad about not having at least like one ingredient because I buy things in bulk. Mm -hmm. And so I will think that I have baking powder or baking soda or some uh other very important ingredient and be like, I need a substitution. (laughs) No, those two were pretty critical. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. When we were in New Zealand, we went to the Wild Foods Festival, Uh um, which is super fun. Like it, it wasn't what we expected, but my husband ate a lot of weird, weird things. Yep. And the thing that was the grossest was the um, seagull egg. Oh, uh uh-huh. I only have a tiny bit of it. Absolutely disgusting. I would eat grubs all day long. Yeah. I would not eat that seagull egg. That was really gross. Yeah. I've had Mm. balut. Mm -mm. Is that that, um, the fermented whale? No, it's partially formed egg. (laughs) <laughs> no, uh, I went to uh, Iceland and okay. they were offering me the shark head that got buried situation. And I'm like, okay. no chance, dude. No okay. chance. I did have their local drink called Brennavit, which is the only alcohol I've ever had in my life that gets worse as you drink it. Like normally when you drink alcohol, it starts tasting better as right. you go because you get mm-hmm. drunker. No, Brennavit is not that way. Huh. <laughs> well, what, what is it made out of? Um, it's a, a a licorice flavored one, and I like licorice flavored, oh. like anise flavored thing. Yeah, I, I love like that. that. I I love it. This was uh-huh. not good, <laughs> but oh. 
literally like half a shot and you're already sitting on the floor so okay you don't, so you don't need, need much, much. <laughs> no but we, I was where with a whole bunch of dudes and we were kind of having a balls contest and I refused okay. to be the chick that like checks out right. so I was making an effort mm-hmm. Mm-mm. not worth it can't recommend it <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah Oh, that makes me think of when I was in PEI, we went to a distillery and they had some port, it's a, the people that, that started it were Portuguese mm-hmm. and they made this, um, anisette type of liqueur. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Some of it's really good. Like I've had really good anise yeah. flavored. Yeah. Anise, anise. I don't know. Anyway. You say it a much prettier way than most people say it. Oh, okay. I, I don't know why I say it that way though. I like, well, cause it's pretty probably oh, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because when you say anise, yeah. then people just like laugh at you. <laughs> it sounds like another word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I usually go for like fennel, like when, yeah. whenever oh, yeah. I'm talking about it with people, I know that we'll start laughing. I just yeah. say fennel, but, mm-hmm. but yeah. yeah. Hmm. Which song has the ability to cheer you up? Oh my goodness. So many. So I said before, I'm a music person cheering me up wise. If I want to dance, it's the reprise from the Lion King musical, Mm -hmm. um, the he lives in you reprise. Mm -hmm. Um, because that is like the more celebratory version of it. And I, I actually, um, I was young enough that when, uh, the Lion King two came out, they were they put some of the st- the music that was in Lion King two or vice versa f- that was in the the musical, so um or the Broadway show. So the He Lives in You song I remember hearing it on that and when I was little and thinking like well little is relative but when I was younger and thinking like wow this is like this gets me going you know I really like to dance and stuff and then when I finally saw it on Broadway hearing it in the reprise version where it's really just like you know you want to dance and stuff um was awesome and what was so cool about it is that when I was in college I took uh lots of African dance classes Mm -hmm. and it was some of that same that Mm -hmm. same energy I was able to feel during that so whenever I hear that particular song I can't help but dance and it makes me happy and I I want to scream you know at the top of my lungs singing all of the stuff and I try really hard to make sure that I pronounce the the words correctly because I'm I'm a purist like that. And yeah, it's just, it's so much fun. I did it not too long, well, in the summer, not too long ago, and I had all the windows open and my neighbor walked by, she was walking her dog and she just like looked in the house and I was like, because <laughs> I'm, I'm literally like, I'm doing all the African dance, you know, uh-huh. things that I remember from college and just like screaming and belting out all this stuff and Anne's with me and... <laughs> I'm sure it was a funny sight to see, and I hope that I sounded okay, but it's right in my range. (laughs) That's awesome. That's really (laughs) awesome. You weren't pregnant anymore, right? Uh, No, no. It was this past summer, so. Okay, yeah. Fresh out of the womb. If given the option to time travel to your past and give yourself a one-sentence piece of advice, what age would you choose to go to, and what would you say? Zach said fifth grade. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, no. Learning about it on the fly wasn't wasn't the worst thing ever. I just really felt ill prepared compared to my yeah. peers. Yeah, very ill prepared. But this is this is a very somber thing. But it would be, you know, about the time that I was getting engaged, and just say it's not going to work out, like oh, mm-hmm. to my first my first husband. But what if not marrying that guy would not have set all the things in motion so that you could marry your current husband? I've, I've thought about that and I don't think it would have made that much of a difference. Oh, okay. Just kind of like thinking about the way that my brain works and what I would have decided to do. I don't think that it would have made my path that much different. Okay. Cause there was a lot in, in me and I, like, I, I always make sure that any young friends that I have that are about to embark on, you know, getting married that I, I ask them, like, make sure that you think about being married to this person not just getting married because we were high school sweethearts and all we could think of is like when we get married we can live together Mm because we were in a conservative christian environment and so that's the only way it was possible and so like 
oh, this is going to be great and blah, blah, blah. And we had a fairy tale wedding. It was wonderful. But honestly, as everybody left and I went to the bathroom, I literally thought like, oh my God, uh-huh. what have I done? Um, and so like, there's this you know, emoji. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it, I really feel like it would have saved him. It would have saved me. Like it would have saved so many things if I would have just broke it off the like one or two times that I mm-hmm. had thought about doing it. So I've been engaged four times. Four times. Wow. Four times because I am a marrying kind of girl. Um, <laughs> Have you I'm married the- four times though? Nope. Once. Okay. okay. And I waited until I was 31 to get married and I'm pleased about that decision. <laughs> I am so glad I did not marry any of those other boys. Well, good. <laughs> it was sometimes me that was like, no. And sometimes them that was like, no, we shouldn't do this right now. We should wait and whatever. Yeah. But like, no matter what, it was a good decision for sure. Well, good. Yeah, one one thing that I am kind of jealous about with other people that had waited to get married is that they did date. I have married twice and I have dated twice. So like, yeah, <laughs> I, I knew from the first relationship exactly what I didn't want. Mm-hmm. So it made it to where when this relationship happened, it, it was very clear. Mm hmm the things that I was like, oh yeah, this is actually, it worked out. It does not always happen that way. Yeah. Um, I don't consider myself to have dated very much, even though. Really? Because I was in now four very long-term relationships that were okay. several, like the shortest one was four years and the longest okay. one was nine years. So I was like, at that point, you're pretty much married. Like we lived together. We had okay. shared everything. Like the only thing you don't have is the paper and the ring and you can get out of it a lot easier. That's true. But I've only really dated those people and that it, I never really dated them. It was like you were instantly boyfriend and girlfriend. Okay. So it's that's, I think, a little bit different than like casually dating people, you know? Like I've never, I've never been a a person who like, there was one summer where I was like kind of seeing a few people when I was like 17. And then since then it's been like full adult, like, huh? Like committed. Yes. I'm, I'm instantly committed. Okay. I'm, I'm a monogamous, I'm a serially monogamous person. (laughs) As am I. (laughs) Yeah. Although I have resolved to think that if it can't work out this time around, that it's not going to with anyone else because- Mm -hmm. Because my, my husband is like the most patient person Yeah, and I am not. And I, I wouldn't say that I'm super difficult, but I know that I, I know how I am. So like, I think that I would be fine being single after this. Yeah. I tried to be single. I I got out of the nine year relationship and I was like, I want to be single for, and then my husband was like, no, no, we're going to, we're going to be together. And I was like, oh my God, no. And he was like, no, but yes, my husband's a creeper, but I love him. (laughs) (laughs) But there wasn't really that much of an option. (laughs) Okay. Well, I'm glad it worked out. Like that's, that's a really, it's interesting because like a lot of people that have waited, like I'd said before, they've waited to get married that they've dated a little bit more. Yeah. So. yeah. I think if, if something didn't happen, like if, if we either something happened to him or if we broke up or whatever, yeah, I would probably like to stay single for, I'm an only child, so I'm fine being by myself. Oh. I do like being brought juice and like toast mm. and stuff though. So like, you like do- being doted on. It's a little bit nice to have another person in the house. My husband is the nicest. He provides room service. It's like in his vows that he has to bring me juice whenever I want to. <laughs> I could literally be like juice and he would come flying in here and take the glass and then nice. go get me juice. Nice. And that includes if it's not in the house, he will go to the store if I want him to. I'm always like, no, 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 don't. But like, oh, wow. yeah, he'll, he's like, I'm going to go to the store. And I'm like, no, it's 3 a.m. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a service, like a service oriented person. Yeah. Yeah. And that's cool. For sure. If you could meet any historic figure and ask them only one question, who would it be? And what would you ask? I'm trying to think of like my most revered historical figures. I would go ask like Einstein how he likes his cheeseburger or something like because <laughs> it's if you have that many people that you, like it's almost pointless to have to narrow it down to one right like right 
Right. So the problem is I've watched a lot of historical things lately. So those are the things that are rattling in my head. Not the things that like that I necessarily revere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Abraham Lincoln is a hot dog a sandwich. <laughs> we're hot when were hot dogs invented technically i have no idea <laughs> now i want to look up the history of the hot dog i might have to go with another music one okay oh i know who is elise oh asking, asking Beethoven. Yeah. that's what, one of my favorite movies is uh, immortal <laughs> beloved and that's a great um movie. gary oldman man and mm-hmm. his prime mm-hmm. oh, so many feelings yeah that's probably that's the only one I can think of, or, you know, maybe asking, you know, George Sands if she actually loved Chopin mm-hmm. or something like that. But um, ask Mona Lisa, what were you thinking about, girl? <laughs> <laughs> or was she even real? Right. The things, the things that we need to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a room filled with everything you've ever lost, what item would you be the most excited to recover? Obviously, mine is little T. Right. <laughs> Hands down. Oh, all the things that I've ever lost. There's a lot of things because I'm very scatterbrained and I leave stuff everywhere. I did lose my first engagement ring. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I left it at work, I think, because I took it off. I was, it was new to me and it was really heavy and I'm not used to wearing rings and I took it off and I was playing with it and I put it down on the table and then I came back the next day and it was gone. And like, there's a police, I have insurance. So they made me a new okay. one, whatever. I don't like the new one as much as I like the old one. The new one is better because when you get insurance on jewelry, it's always for more than your jewelry is actually worth. So when they okay. make the new thing, the new thing is always bigger and better. Like the diamond is slightly mm-hmm. better and they put more tiny diamonds around it. You know, like all that stuff. Okay. It's, it's clear it's a way better diamond, but that diamond, because it was slightly champagne colored, it sparkled a lot more and it was like, you know, it meant a lot more to me. So, eh. right. But still little T. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I know there's definitely jewelry that I, I would miss if, if like, if I remembered that I had lost it. <laughs> That's the problem. Great thing about it. Like you don't remember it. So it's not technically lost. Like it's not. A right. Problem. Right. Yeah. The, the devastation is, is no more. I have a, or well, I used to have a spatula. (laughs) I'm so lame. Um, I I used to have, (laughs) I used to have this spatula that was absolutely wonderful. Um, and, uh, in my move or in one of the moves or whatever, I ended up losing it. I found one that is a close second. Like I really, I like the feel of it in, in my hand. It works really well. <laughs> it's a good all around spatula. Um, but yeah, that particular, and I don't remember what the make was. And I, I can't remember, I can't remember any of the like key factors of it because it was just always there. Yeah. What is, what is a prime, like good spatula to you? Well, I would go get the one upstairs if I didn't have to go up th- like three flights of stairs. I am always at the stove like hands down I'm always at the stove and the recent one that I've gotten it's actually a flat it's it's kind of shaped like a U and it's somewhat flattened but it's not totally perfect so it's kind of like bowed up a little bit Mm -hmm. but what's so nice about it is it's also beveled oh so the in it you can scoop like you can actually scoop you can saute you can you can make jam with it because it'll scrape the bottom Uh of your pan off yeah and um, I got it. I paid way more for it than I normally would. And I'm so glad that I did. I went to this antique shop where the husband of the owner is a woodworker. Mm-hmm. And so he had like all of his things up and I was like, that's a really pretty spatula. And I had, I had lost a spatula years, like years ago. And I was like, this looks like a really nice spatula. And I picked it up and it like fit my hand really well. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is really nice. And so I like, I walked around and I had it in my hand. I'm like looking like a weirdo. You're like spatula. scooping things off the shelves. Do <laughs> it just work for me? <laughs> right. And it, I mean, it's it's a simple, it's just a maple spatula and or a maple wooden spatula. And it's, it's wood- very, it's, yeah, it's wooden of all things. Oh, wow, okay. Um, I, I don't use it with meat, um, but I use it for everything else. Are you not yeah. supposed to use wood with meat? No, it, I just don't like to because I can't verify that I've sterilized it. Oh, so I like, think it makes you stronger. <laughs> well, I mean, yes. 
<laughs> um, I also, I just don't want to get any stomach bug. Um, Watch is a serious concern for Amber. Noted. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. It, it just, it fits my hand really well. It's a really good length. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have honestly. The that will get made. <laughs> yeah. I have honestly thought about contacting him and mm-hmm. taking it to him and saying, can you remake these? And then mm-hmm. giving it to my friends. Yeah. That would be a great gift. Because like, this is, this is an item that I dearly love. And whenever I have the opportunity to pull that spatula out of my, my like spatula jar, I'm like, yes. If you get that to happen, I want to get in on that. Yeah, I definitely will. Yeah. Um, that they, and they're really pretty. Like the other thing too is that it's it's a very like feminine shape. Like it's oh. very curvy, mm-hmm. and and so it's just it's delightful to look at. It's a pretty color. It works really well. It feels good. It's got good weight. <laughs> Everything about it. It's just it's a good spatula. This is the most esoteric and also fun. 20 questions I've had in a long time. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I could talk forever about any of my new things, <laughs> but that is one of my favorite things right now. All right. So, I mean, I have a, a pan that I'm really into and I've talked through all 20 questions about this pan. So I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, a, I can't it's, wait to watch all of them so I can hear every detail. It's like a, a crepe pan that I bought at the beginning of, of COVID and it, it may like we we fry eggs on it like I've not made a crepe on it but we do everything <laughs> on this pan because it's basically a like frying pan without the sides right so that's what brand what is it uh probably like Cuisinart or something you know okay so it's a modern one yeah it's definitely okay. like made out of something a night or flan or of okay. some sort you know <laughs> yeah nothing sticks to it it's fantastic That's awesome. I have a cast. I'm I'm a big fan of cast iron. So I bought a a lodge pan crepe pan, Uh but it's not a real crepe pan. And I'm Uh still angry that I have it because Mm -hmm. it like a crepe pan should be nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one has a little edge on the edge. Right. Well, and that's what they marketed it as. So when I bought it, I paid a lot of money because it's lodge wear or whatever. Mm-hmm. No, I need. So what I do for pans when I'm in the market is I go to antique stores mm-hmm. and I literally just pick up every single like mm-hmm. cast iron pan and feel it in my hand. Mm-hmm. So like, does it feel good? Is it a good weight? <laughs> yeah. And then that's when I decide to buy it. Like it, it rarely, and it makes sure that it doesn't have shoe polish. Cause sometimes they'll put shoe polish on them. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta watch out. Wow. But, I hadn't considered that there's like a cast iron grift going on (laughs) well I mean we could get into all of like the pickers (laughs) and stuff what what they do but I think I think what it is is if you're not if you are an antiques person Mm -hmm. and you're not a cast iron antiques person Mm -hmm. you just see a cast iron pan and think oh this needs polished up right Uh, and they'll put it on there you don't Um, think it's malicious in an attempt to try to make it look better to sell it it's possible. There are evil people everywhere. If you want to take that off of there, you just have to grind it all down and then re-season it. Okay. So it's it's not the worst thing in the world, mm-hmm. but you'll definitely notice when you go to cook on it, once that heats up, there's a certain smell. Cause I, yeah, I bought one that was like that. No shoe polish on my food preparation. Yeah. No. It takes a it took a long time for me to re-season it to the point where it doesn't smell weird. Weird. Yeah. Okay. So all right, this is the last of the 20 questions. Oh my gosh, already? (laughs) It's been like an hour and a half. What? (laughs) Yeah. You're so much fun to talk to. It doesn't have, it doesn't seem like it's been that long. (laughs) If you could have any artifact, piece of art or thing from any art gallery, what would you have? Would it get stolen back from me? Nope, you're allowed to have it. If I had it in my house. Okay. I mean, if you had a burglar, maybe, but. Okay. It's not like, it's not like museum police would be like, you have this painting. It's legally yours. You're allowed to have it. All right. It would probably have to be one of either Marie Cassatt's paintings or Mm -hmm. Mary Cassatt. Just about any painting from her, I I deeply love. I've always known that I wanted to be a mom in one way or another. So the fact that her subject matter is mostly women in in the domestic sphere caring for their family, that's, that's what I like. So either that or one of the Lily study paintings that Monet did. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Those are beautiful. 
Mm. For sure. Of course, I don't. I don't need the big one. I would be happy with this. Take the big one. Like yours. I have a house big enough. (laughs) Why not? Just clear a wall out. (laughs) Build a wall. (laughs) Yeah, I guess I could if I had. Well, get a Monet. Build a wall. (laughs) Be like Trump. (laughs) But it it would be really lovely to just look at because I don't like water features on (laughs) property. Anytime we've like looked at property and it's had a water feature, my husband's like, ooh, and I'm like, I have a 2000 gallon koi pond in my yard and it is the one thing that I would remove from this house should I be able to do that I love how it looks I love how it sounds there's like a Japanese maple that like oh it oh, hangs over the koi pond the koi are really happy you know like it's a great um, thing it is the giantest sinkhole of money I've ever met in my life all of them are no yeah. matter what water feature you've got in your head, like at your place, if it's a, if it's a, I'm going to sound very judgmental, but I'd feel very passionate about this. <laughs> if it's like a pool, mm-hmm. if it's a, a hot tub mm-hmm. or, you know, a creek, you, there's maintenance to be had. And, maintenance. and like, at least in Ohio, which is, you know, I've only lived for peri- long periods of time in Ohio. There's always bugs. Oh, no yeah, matter what that. you do, there's always bugs if you have a water feature. Yeah. So we, our last house in Dayton had a pond on it and it was a really lovely lot. I love just about everything about the lot except for the pond. Yeah. And uh, we don't have bugs, so that's not a problem. It's yeah. delightful. It's just like it, like every once a year, it springs some sort of leak and it's like, almost impossible to find and we have this giant water bill and then we have to go get a guy to come fix the thing and like I also pay for a monthly pond maintenance guy to come and like clean clean all the filters and clean all the like because it grows plants like you wouldn't believe we have plants all around it that just go crazy because they're getting extra water you know like yeah it's a thing it's a it's a big dollar sign thing (laughs) yeah we we had a lot of maintenance issues with ours because one of the people so the, the way that was thought was, is it was the old farmhouse on a developed lot. Mm-hmm. So in the middle of it, it was super, super long, skinny acre. And we had nine neighbors all the way around us Whoa. on one side, nine neighbors. And then That's a church. A I have one and <laughs> I, I, growing up, I, we had neighbors that we couldn't see and it was wonderful. So th- when that happened, everybody's trees in the fall, they drop all of these things everywhere. So the pond would get like nasty gunk in it. And mm-hmm. then there was this one willow tree and willows are awful <laughs> because they just spring up everywhere. There's a pond, yeah. of course it wants to live there. So mm-hmm. they're like, if you just leave it for a couple months, you have all of these like willow weeds coming up that you have to literally mow down and there's no other way to kill them other than with chemicals. Yeah. And I'm not a chemicals person. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh, we're going to like kill the fish. We're going to kill all the things around it. What if the dogs drink out of it? Mm-hmm. And Ian's like, this, like, this stuff is supposed to be okay. I'm like, ah, chemicals. <laughs> My husband uh, is the ah chemicals and I'm like, kill it with fire. <laughs> yeah. It's cool though that you guys have koi in your pond. Cause we just yeah. had, we just had like turtles. We had a turtle and he kept eating the fins of the koi. And then some, so our pond is super deep. So because oh. we have birds of prey here that will come eat things out of the pond because they're trapped okay. in a pond, right? So okay. uh, we think the turtle got nabbed because one day we go out there and he doesn't have one of his arms. So he's now mm. a three legged turtle that's swimming around. His name was Shredder, which I think is funny because Shredder is the rat from. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, okay. kind of like you could have named the, the turtle any one of the turtle names. But right. You, so anyway, uh, we think that happened. And then Shredder, Shredder got an infection like two winters later and died while he was in hibernation at the bottom of the pond. And oh, so, okay. so anyway, we have koi. All of these things came with the house. Like you have no choice. When you buy our house, you get these koi. <laughs> and okay. so, yeah. Or like once a year, a fish will definitely get sick. And, and we don't know why and you have to like figure out what's going on like we had one shredder ate all the fins off of one of the fish one year and I had to like take the fish out and put in its own little area that I had to change the water out of twice a day and like hand feed this fish for a little while and then I built this giant net contraption that I could put in the big pond so the fish could be with its other so it turns out fish you know how fish school fish get lonely yeah. not with their other fish Aww. so I had to put him back in the in the 
like thing. I had to build this whole thing. It was an it, it's a nightmare. Every year there's some nightmare. I'm just like, oh, how old are these koi? They're pretty old. You know, they're probably like 10 or 15 years old now, but koi lived for like hundreds of years. So it's so cool. I mean, it, it's cool, but it's it definitely sounds like a headache. Yeah. I mean, they're cool and they're pretty. It's it's really beautiful for everyone else that visits my home. Right. <laughs> 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 so, my husband loves them mm-hmm. and I'm just like, oh my God, I hate this. I, I wish I could like just fill the pond in and then put like a nice patio set over that, that area. Right. Like, underneath the Japanese maple and and let it be a little picnic area. Like mm-hmm. something. But but no. I mean, the noise of it is really lovely. It's beautiful. It has two rock waterfalls coming down from it. It's artfully oh. lit. It has reeds in it. It's like, it's beautiful. Hmm. Beautiful. Well, it's it's <laughs> awesome that you're keeping whatever you the previous owner of the house's passion like going. Because yeah. yeah. because a lot of people would just be like killing fish yeah. and then cement it over. No, those. I mean, I, we have one fish that I'm pretty sure is worth like a lot of money like ten thousand hmm. dollars kind of fish because he's huge like massive yeah, yeah. Huh. so it turns out koi are like very valuable okay yeah so, i had no idea so funny story we have this river that runs through this valley called the guadalupe the mighty okay. guadalupe and it's now like a trickling stream because it's been dammed up and closed and whatever and it's mm-hmm. been overpass has been put over whatever so there's okay. this like part of the guadalupe in which everybody dumps their old koi and koi oh. have a problem living in new water like they don't like being put in different water than they've been okay. raised in but these are hardy koi and so they've they've lived there so there's this whole like pond thing that every summer shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until it's like a massive bundle of koi that are just swimming around each other because you know evaporation happens and the right yeah so like a lot of people are really like irresponsible with their koi in my area Aww. yeah that's so sad and on that sad note i'm gonna ask you a super <laughs> controversial bonus question i've been waiting for it is a hot dog a sandwich okay so i've been thinking about this for months <laughs> uh-huh there, I, I listened to another podcast called the Judge John Hodgman podca- podcast, and he talks about this whole thing, and he has a very specific stance on it. Um, so I've heard both, kind of both sides, and I don't think it's a sandwich. So like, okay. definitively, I don't think it's a sandwich, but I think that you have to look at all handheld meat and bread street foods like this. What about non-meat meat and bread? Well, but a hot dog doesn't like if we're talking about like a hot dog. Okay. All right. It's sure. within the meat and bread, the meat right. and bread things. So it's kind of like a, a scale. So you've uh-huh. got like taco, which uh-huh. is something that doesn't stand up on its own. Yeah. Um, you have a euro. Unleavened, unleavened bread, euros and everything. And slowly as things like go towards sandwich level, you get to the hot dog. And I think that the hot dog you could consider it the most sandwich-like of the tacos. <laughs> oh, you're in the taco side. More oh. so. Or it is uh-uh. the most taco-like of the sandwiches. Nope. Mm-mm. All of Mexico is screaming right now. <laughs> well, I, I also love tacos. An on this. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I, maybe I do now because Ruth Bader Ginsburg said it was a sandwich. So now I'm kind of yeah. like, oh, maybe I am on team sandwich. Mm-hmm. Um because I, I will fight you no matter what. Um, okay. <laughs> but I am hardcore. It is not, not a, taco. a taco. Also, I, I'm hardcore that a hamburger is a sandwich. Okay. Yeah. So the I think that what makes it not a sandwich is the fact that it can't stand up by itself. What does that mean? So, or like the, the, the things won't fall a sand, out. A sandwich doesn't do that. And a hot dog can stand up by itself. I've seen plenty of hot dogs when you set them on the counter, they just sit there. Yes, but like the bread, I really feel like the horizontal bread where it just kind of like is like this and you've got your meat layer, that it has to be layered vertically, not this way. Hmm. Okay. All right. So that's, that's like, that's why I say it's the most sandwich like of the taco like street foods. 
Okay, the second you say taco, I stop listening. Sorry. I I understand. (laughs) Um, but like I I can't think of any other like extreme of a meat and bread type of street food. Because like even a gyro is more like a sandwich than a taco, but it still doesn't hold up by itself. No, or like a a pizza sandwich or more like a taco than a sandwich. Right. So like gyro is one piece of pita that you fold up and then put yeah. or wrap around it's more like a burrito really right I don't know it, it's hard it, so I've thought about it so much that my brain is like wrapped around it six times <laughs> over um but but yeah I I still stand by it's a sliding scale uh-huh but it's it is not, not a sandwich, sandwich okay but it is more the sa- most sandwich like of the taco like street foods Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you for joining me today, Amber. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> I will leave a list of Amber's accounts down below so that you can go check her out and show her some love. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below about what you guys are up to. And for those four of you out there who have not told me how you feel about tacos, no, hot dogs, <laughs> whatever we're talking about, you don't come at me with this taco thing. Cause I will delete your comment. Um, <laughs> leave me your opinion if you need to, and I will see you at an soon with another video. Bye guys. <laughs>